Hey everybody, welcome back to Linux for Everyone and welcome home. Jason here and our mission today is to see if this sleek little PC in a keyboard that is the Raspberry Pi 400 can handle video editing. Now, I normally edit videos for the channel on a variety of devices. Normally, my 12-core PC with an NVIDIA 2080 Super in there or, you know, high-powered Intel or Ryzen-based laptops. But can we actually throw together a video with the Raspberry Pi 400 at, say, 720p or 1080p with, uh, you know, transitions and multiple tracks? Let's find out. Before we get into it, I want to take a moment to thank our new sponsor, Linode. If it runs on Linux, you can run it on Linode. They have multiple distros available, including Ubuntu, CentOS, Alpine, and Arch, by the way. They've got multiple server plans to make any app or service flexible and scalable. You can use a Linode server to host a blog, to set up uh, your own personal VPN, or you can do what I did, which is fire up a dedicated Jitsi server for upcoming community interviews and hangouts. Also, Shickle is gonna be running a Minecraft server, and that is also super simple to install. Linode has 24-7, 365 support available by phone, regardless of your plan size, so you can get help from a real person if you need it. Right now, Linux for Everyone viewers can get started on Linode with a $100 credit by going to linode.com slash Linux for Everyone. Linode's been doing cloud computing since 2003, which is actually three years before Amazon entered the picture, so they're not trying to take over the retail world like other companies. Just good old-fashioned Linux-loving cloud computing. Linode.com slash Linux for everyone. And uh, again, a huge, huge thank you to Linode for sponsoring Linux for everyone. So for this little experiment, I am using Ubuntu Mate 20.10, which uh, I have found to be the most stable, the smoothest, and uh, it, it's also great with out-of-the-box playback for things like YouTube as well. And it also gives you uh, a lot of options for different desktop paradigms. You know, if you want it to look more like Mac OS, or you want it to look more like Windows, or more like... Uh, a range of other desktop environments, Mate can handle that for you. Plus, you know, when, when you put the Raspberry Pi logo together with the, the default green background, it, it kind of makes you want to eat a watermelon. I don't know. Is that just me? Um, <laughs> anyway, let's get down to business. The first thing we're going to do is fire up Ubuntu Mate's software boutique, which is a, it has really good presentation. Uh, I like that you can queue up multiple apps at once and then install them in a batch. That's very, very handy. Uh, but for now, we're going to install Kaden Live. There is an ARM version for this. And in my quick research before this video, I really didn't find very many native ARM video editing apps. And, you know, Kaden Live is pretty well established. There's a good, um, good development progress behind it. And some of the recent updates um, really add a lot of polish and a lot more usability to it. So we're gonna go ahead and try this out. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm heading over to our next cloud instance that we have, and I've uploaded some assets for us to work with. We've got a voice over here and some uh, logo animations and super fan credits, and then I've also got some desktop environment footage and uh, some 4K footage of me playing guitar. I thought this would represent a good mix of the kind of files that people would be working with. So let's go ahead and download all of these. Now you'll notice that our project is at 1080p, 25 FPS. So we're gonna go into our project settings and let's make this 1080p, 30 FPS. And by the way, Caden Live will um, most of the time suggest a profile for you based on the clips that you import, but when you're importing um, you know, mixed resolutions and mixed frame rates, it's best to just set it yourself so that you're positive that you're working with the desired, uh, desired output. Okay, so let's go ahead and add those clips to our bin. Downloads, Pi 400 editing, and we're just going to import all of these. Okay, so we have our clips imported. Let's go ahead and drag our opening 
logo animation into the timeline and just place it at the very beginning. And let's play it back. Ouch. Okay, so that was not a very smooth experience. Why is that? Well, it's because with a very, you know, it's a capable but very underpowered CPU, we're gonna have to work with what's called proxy clips. And proxy clips basically enable you to work with smaller, lower resolution versions, kind of copies of your original clips. And that makes uh, trimming and editing and scrubbing and the entire process of video editing much, much smoother for more underpowered machines. So all we're gonna do is enable proxy clips. These are all 1080p or higher, so we're just gonna say generate for videos larger than 720 pixels and click apply and then click okay. So now we can just highlight all the clips in our project and check proxy clip and you're gonna see these start to be converted. Okay, so Caden Live has created proxy clips of all of our footage here and this one took the longest because this is actually 4K and uh, I'm gonna save that one for last. Let's start this again. We'll put our logo animation intro thing here and let's play it back. Much, much better. Okay, so let's add this clip and let's scrub along here a little bit. Yeah, scrubbing seems pretty good. Let's, uh, let's go to about right here, and we're gonna clip this, because we don't need that. And you know what, we don't really need the audio. Let's ungroup these clips and remove the audio. What we are gonna do is drag in my voiceover right after the intro, and just because I've worked with this voiceover, I know that that's right about where it actually starts. So let's delete this. And we're gonna bring that in right about there. And just to be very, very precise, right when this logo animation ends, that's where we're gonna bring in our cool retro term footage from uh, Ubuntu 20.10 on the Pi. So let's play it back from the beginning now. Desktop environments. They are one of the most distinct advantages Linux has over Windows and Mac OS. It can be also... <laughs> it can also be one of the most confusing hurdles... Yeah, little peek behind the curtain. I do so many takes for these voiceovers. You guys have no idea. This is why I, I very rarely do uh, live things because I need lots of practice. All right, but we're not we're not editing a perfectly polished video. So let's uh, let's go ahead and put in this budgie welcome screen here. All right, so let's just uh, let's make a I don't know. Let's make a one minute video. Right there is where we're going to kill it. So we'll just chop the rest. Let's bring in this 4K clip. It is proxied, of course. In. Not bad. Not bad. You know what we should do, though? Let's add some color grading or some kind of effect to this clip just to really, really put the herd on our CPU. Let's just do some saturation. We're just gonna drag saturation into this clip like that. See, oh, we can see it actually changing mostly in real time. Not bad. I'm gonna just drain all the color from it. Now let's play it back. Yeah, it's struggling a bit now. Definitely struggling a bit now. But we can decrease the preview resolution 
to get a little bit smoother playback and we'll still have an idea of how that clip is going to look. Again, not super smooth, but remember that this was a 4K clip and we are editing at, uh, we're, we're creating a 1080p 30 frame per second project on a $70 PC. And look at this. Scrubbing is pretty nice. Okay, so the last thing we should do, let's add a fade here. Let's just fade that out. That's probably good. And guys, I think we just put together a simple 1080p video on a Raspberry Pi. Now, let's render the thing. Okay, so we're going to just do standard MP4. All right, so it's the moment of truth. Our render finished in about eight minutes, and I did it a few times. It actually takes anywhere from six to 10 minutes, and that is a long time for a 60 second video, but you know what? I mean, we're, we're editing. We're, we're producing a 1080p video on a $70 computer, which I think on its own is uh, pretty stellar. So we're just gonna open this up and see what we have. Desktop environments. They are one of the most distinct advantages Linux has over Windows and Mac OS. It can also be one of the most confusing hurdles for beginners. <laughs> You know what? Like quality wise, it looks pretty good. That's probably good. So, yeah, there it is. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty impressed. I'm really, really impressed. And I want to do more now. I want to see how far we can push this. But, uh, of course, the rendering time is going to be your biggest hurdle to productivity when doing video editing on the Pi. And things might get a little bit uh, choppier and chunkier uh, at the more, you know, the more clips that we add and the, the more that timeline grows and the more effects that we have. But I'm pretty confident in saying that if you just want to make some basic videos, that don't involve a lot of cuts and a lot of fine tuning and a lot of color grading and special effects, uh, I think that you should download Caden Live and import all your clips and make sure that you've got your proxy clips activated and go for it and let me know how you do. As far as my setup goes, I thought you guys might be interested in seeing this and now you're probably going to plug your Raspberry Pi 400 into a TV that you already have or a monitor that you already have. But my entire setup is less than $300 and it's super, super portable. So I'm using a Lapau 15.6 inch USB-C monitor, which uh, the Raspberry Pi 400 is completely powering, by the way. And I'm also using a, um, a fairly high end, I guess, Alienware 610M, but it's a great setup. You can obviously do it for cheaper, but if you're interested in this gear, I'll have some affiliate links down in the description for this video. You guys are welcome to click on that. And if you end up buying anything there, then uh, that helps out the channel directly and doesn't cost you anything extra. And stay tuned for much more in this series as we kind of explore what this tiny little computer is capable of. Until the next video, you guys take care and take care of each other. Bye. Love